Hello everybody and welcome to episode 50, 5 zero. We made it all the way here. You made it all the way here, presumably. Um, I wish, I wish so much that this were the final episode. It would have been perfect to end on episode 50. Um, but as it is, it's probably going to be 51, frustratingly. Um, but that just is how it is. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be implementing the pause menu. So we're currently able to pause the game, like if I do an attack and then just press escape, you can see it's sort of paused midway through that attack, and then I press escape again and it carries on, right? Um, and we've been fairly diligent about like um, making sure we wrap our various entities and different uh, behaviors that we want to pause in our sort of uh, checks to see whether or not the game is paused without you know running things. Um, but we have managed to introduce at least one pause bug. There's probably more. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sure there will be things I've forgotten along the way. But um, as somebody pointed out, I can't remember where, but like if you uh, start a room transition like this and you pause, um, you come into the next room, you see like everything is kind of paused, although some animations are playing, it's not quite properly paused. Um, and then uh, if I press escape to try and resume, um, it, it crashes, okay? The problem here is that uh, we're able to pause while the transitioning is happening and the transition doesn't pause. Um, so the transition will go ahead and move us to the next room and objects there won't, like, like they'll spawn in, like unport, it, it just breaks everything, right? The way we can fix this, um, one would be to, um, we could make it so that you know, uh, the transition stopped happening when we were paused because you know, at the moment it doesn't doesn't care at all about whether or not um, game paused is true or not. But um, I think a, a room transition is honestly the type of thing we don't really necessarily want the player to be able to pause in, okay? So what I'm going to do instead is, no, not the player, we're going to come to a game where we are able to pause the game. Uh, in the end step is where we did our game pause. And very, very simply, I'm going to come right to the top here, um, just make this a little bit bigger, and I'm just going to add an extra condition to when we press the escape to key to actually pause the game, alright? So I'm going to do an and, um, I'm going to check to see that there are no instances uh, by writing not instance exists, uh, O transition. Alright, close bracket, close bracket, um, and that's really all there is to it, because like if there are no instances of that object, then we can go ahead and pause safely. And if there are, then we just don't let you pause or unpause, okay? We just don't let you do it. It can get a little messy doing things this way eventually, if you've got lots of different reasons why you might not want to be paused and so on. Um, but, like, as uh, a, a general quick solution for this kind of thing, it's, it's very straightforward to just, you know, wrap the thing in a condition and say just don't let you do it when it would be a problem. So uh, when the transition start, we can press escape, but nothing's happening. And then once we're actually in the room, uh, I can uh, pause again. <laughs> there we go. Uh, it's just sometimes tricky to actually get a thing to demonstrate. But that's what we're going to be fixing today, actually, is we're going to be making it so that when we pause, we get a little pause menu that comes up. Um, we sort of darken the screen, and it's very clear. Uh, that we have actually paused, because right now it's just sort of the barest functionality, kind of there just to make us behave ourselves and make sure we actually um, did the work as we went along and made sure that you were able to um, pause at the right times and so on. That's another place where you maybe don't want to be able to pause actually is during the dead state, but I think it's... Uh, let's actually just check that. Like, what happens if you're dying and you pause? That might be another bug. Pause. No, okay, because it's going to halt your animation, halts the state and everything, and that actually works out just fine. All right. As I said, there's probably other bugs with the pause and stuff. There's, there's probably lots of bugs in the game in general, right? Um, I think it, it, we've largely done a pretty good job, um, but, you know, the, the game's gotten fairly sizable. We're 50 episodes in. I'm sure there is code in here that doesn't account for some edge case of some other bit of code somewhere along the way, and I'm sure we've got bugs. They will exist. They will be my fault. It's fine. Um, hopefully with everything you've learned about Game Maker along the, the way, you'll be able to actually do a lot of the work necessary to go about fixing some of these books. We fixed the bugs throughout the series and shown you how it can be done. If uh, if they do turn out to be quite a few bugs and we work out what they are, we might do a bonus episode 52 at some point in the future where we go through and fix um, or like a whole bunch of them at once. Um, but for now, the, little, the couple of little bugs that I know exist, um, I'm not really going to worry too much about them because I don't think we need to waste loads of time teaching you how to fix them. We just want to get on 
learning how to do new stuff. So with that said, let's move on and learn how to do new stuff. All right, so let's open up OUI, uh, where we do all of the various UI elements, like the, the health and our coins and all that stuff um, in here. In fact, we should probably change this from uh, the, the description at the top here that says draw health um, to draw game UI, because it's everything, right? And this top section is draw health. Uh, that should correct that. Um, yeah, because this has evolved a bit since then. We we draw the health, we draw the, the coin icon, the coin text, and all the UI. And we're going to do at the bottom here uh, is where we're going to draw the um, the pause menu. And by doing it at the bottom, it means we guarantee we draw it over the top of everything else. Okay, and then we don't have to worry about layering and so on. You might think it's more appropriate to do it in our own game since that's where we do the pausing in the first place. But I think the drawing of it and, and so on... Um, um, it is actually just better managed in OUI. We'll handle the rest in here as well. We'll just handle um, the rest of the pause logic in this object. So I'm going to go to create event first of all. And we're going to make this nice and big. Uh, let's maximize this. I'm going to just write uh, de declare a couple of new variables for the pause menu. The first is pause option, and it's just going to be an array that's going to contain um, the strings that are our different pause menu options. Okay, we're just going to have a bunch of text options on the screen that we can pick between. Uh, starting with continue, so we can just carry on playing, which we already can by pressing escape, but it's just nice to have there as an option as well. Uh, save and quit. Um, and then also, uh, slightly differently, save uh, and quit to desktop. All right, so that's like quitting the whole game, and this will be quitting back to like our main menu when we actually implement the main menu, which is episode 51, hopefully. Um, close square bracket, and pause option selected is going to equal zero, and that just says which uh, entry of this array do we actually currently have selected. All right, next I'm going to come to draw GUI, just at the bottom here, like I said, so that we guarantee we draw it over the top, of everything else. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to paste it in. Um, I figure, you know, we're all, uh, we, we've all been through 50 episodes, you're all ready now to handle the notion of me not having to individually type every single line. Um, I can just post this in here, you can largely understand it, and we're just going to, we're still going to go over it, okay? We're going to go over everything, tell you what it all does. I just think you probably don't listen to listen to me type every single um, letter now. I think you understand how code windows work, okay? <laughs> Um, so first of all, if game is paused, if it is paused, then we do any of this. If it doesn't, we don't do any of it. Very simple. Um, draw set color to black, and we're going to set the opacity of everything we're going to draw to be 75%. Okay, that's what draw set alpha does. Then we're going to draw a big rectangle from the top left to the bottom right of the screen. Remember, this is draw GUI, so it's a uh, screen relative. So it's going to draw it from the top left corner of the screen to the bottom right corner of the screen by putting that resolution width and height macros in there. Okay, and false on here because it's not an outline, it's a, a filled rectangle. Then importantly, set the opacity back to one, otherwise like everything in the game is gonna start drawing at 75% opacity and that's not what we want. Um, and then we're gonna set draw color to white, our font to be F text, um, H align to uh, center and V align to middle. Okay, always important to reset your H align, V align, and font and color before drawing any text. Okay, um, I usually in most of my games I actually have a draw set text function that will set all four of these things. Um, just taking in the argument, so I don't have to write four lines. I highly recommend that. Um, I'm sure I've been over this before, but it. it it's worth repeating, you know, uh, always make sure you actually do this each time, don't sort of rely on it being whatever it was set in a previous object doing some other text, just make sure you explicitly set it every single time. Um, then we're going to, uh, <laughs> unless you're relying on what it was literally two lines ago in code, even then I'd consider it, but, but that, that's probably better still. Um, then we're going to draw in the middle of the screen, so just by taking resolution W and resolution H, times them by a half, uh, we're going to write game paused in the middle of the screen, and then we're going to draw our options underneath that. Okay, so we're going to loop through them just by doing a for loop. Um, let's zoom in a little, just so we can get all this on screen, there we go. Um, so starting from zero until I is um, no longer less than uh, the number of pause options we have uh, in the array, where the array length will be four, um, increasing I by one each time. All right, um, and for each one of those options, we're going to set print to be this empty string. 
All right, and then um, depending on whether or not it is the option we have currently selected, we're either gonna add whatever the pause option is from the create event, so whichever one of these it is, um, or we're gonna do that, but also add uh, an arrow either side of it to show that we have that particular option currently selected. Then once we've done that, oh, and also if it's not the one we have selected, we'll also set our draw alpha to be 70% um, here, so it sort of, uh, makes it fade out a little bit more and our selected option looks like it's kind of highlighted all right in contrast um, then once we've done that um, we draw that particular line to the screen by drawing it to the middle of the screen again but this time plus 18 uh, to give it some vertical separation from the game paused um, and then slightly less separation in between each option all right so we've got a slightly bigger gap between game paused and where the options appear and then each option is 12 pixels apart, all right? Because we just multiply whichever one we're on um, by 12. So it'll be 0, then 12, then 24, all right? Just spaces them apart. Um, and then afterwards, we set our alpha back to 1, okay? Because we may or may not have changed it here. So just to be safe, we set it back to 1 there. All right, um, that's everything in terms of actually drawing the menu. So if I just run that now, and then come into the game, I press escape, we actually get the pause menu up. You see, it's colored, uh, the screen kind of dark. Um, we've got game pause in the middle, we've got continue, save and quit, and continue is currently selected. Um, we just, we can't change what's selected because we don't we don't have any functionality to do that. We just, <laughs> we just have the functionality to draw whatever the end result is, okay? But I think it was better to do that and show you kind of like what we're actually aiming for here. And now you, we can make sense based on what pause option select is and pause option is. Um, what our end result is going to be like okay uh, so now what i'm going to do is i'll right click in here and add the end step event it is specifically the end step event because um i wanted to make sure just uh it's just kind of a quick fix for if we continued the game from here um and like we press the enter key or the the space key or whatever it is um it doesn't then carry that space key um, into the player for that frame like it, if you put it on the step event it's there's a decent chance that maybe you unpause and then the player performs its step and checks and sees that the space bar, uh, space bar is pressed and begins a roll just instantly by unpausing the game we can guarantee that doesn't happen um, just by making sure this happens in the end step so that'll happen after everything with the player and so on would have already processed that particular frame okay so i pasted a huge chunk in here um uh, we'll just go over this again bit by bit, so I'll kind of zoom in up here. Um, first of all, of course, we're checking to see if the game is actually paused at the start, and if it is, then we're going to gather our keys just in the same way we would gather them for controlling the player and so on. You might want to investigate doing a more universal approach to like keyboard inputs, maybe have a separate object that deals with inputs, maybe use like a uh, Juju's thing, um, I'll put a link in the description if I remember, um, that like deals with like unifying your inputs and stuff like that. Um, because it can get a bit messy to start checking the gears in like a million and one different places. But it's fine, really. It doesn't, you know, I say these things are messy because I say like if you're doing a really big project, maybe look into some of these things that will just help you out. But none of them are necessary. Whenever I say something is a little bit messy, it doesn't mean it doesn't work, you know. <laughs> um, so don't worry too much about it at all. Um, so once we've got key up and key down, uh, we're going to do pause option selected uh, plus equals um key down minus key up just the same way as we'd like handle it handle like uh, left and right movement in a platform for example right um by doing uh key down minus key up we're either that's either going to be like plus one or negative one or zero um depending on whether neither are pressed both are pressed or just one of them is pressed it's a cute way of dealing with the issue of having like both keys pressed at once Right, so you don't out, like try and move one way and move the other way simultaneously because key, like if they're both pressed, then it becomes one minus one and zero. Okay, if just uh, um, just key up is pressed, it becomes minus one. If just key down is pressed, it becomes plus one. Right. Um, if pause option selected is greater than or equal to the number of options that we have, then pause option selected is going to be zero. And if pause option selected is less than zero, then it's going to equal um the number of options we have minus one okay that's just this is just causing it to wrap around all right so if we go um because obviously our array counts from entry zero to entry three zero one two three so if we um uh but the array length therefore is four four entries so if we're greater than or equal to four that means we've gone over the edge and we wrap around to entry zero and if we are less than zero we've obviously gone under the bottom so we set it to the length which is four minus one which is three our last entry okay just a simple wrap around 
Okay, let's scroll a little bit further down. Um, key activate uh, is going to equal keyboard check uh, pressed space and if key activate. So basically that's just giving us a key to press. The space bar is going to be what selects uh, the option on the menu, all right? And then we just do a switch statement with whichever option is currently selected. Um, if it's case zero, we do continue. And this, this is just here, literally like a copy and paste from when we unpause, right? Um, just in from O game. Set game pause to be false, and with all game pause image speed equals image speed image speed equals zero, right? Um, it's the sort of thing like like it becomes a little bit again a little bit messy to um, to do just this again um, because it's like if our pause and unpause code became more complicated, we'd have to remember to change it in two places. Um, so you might want to write a function for this that like unpauses the game and then like refer to that when you press um, continue here or when you press escape again in O game. Or you could just remove one, I suppose. You could remove uh, the thing from O game that says if you press the button again and make it so you actually have to select it on the menu. I'll leave that up to you. But just worth considering that like you should try and generally avoid duplicating code. We've just done it for simplicity so you understand how it works. Um, rather than having to write an, uh, another function in here and be like, okay, let's all write another function and where do we put it in and so on, right? Just keeping it simple. All right, just pointing that one out. And then uh, case one, save and quit. Uh, we're going to do with oh, game instance destroy, save game and game restart. I don't know if you need to do this. I can't remember the exact reason. I think I was just paranoid about the fact that oh, game was persistent and wasn't sure if game restart actually um, got rid of persistent instances or not. Um, and uh, so I wanted to just make sure we destroyed that if we did so we we didn't accidentally end up with multiple oh, game objects showing up. I think you might not need this line. Um, I'll leave you to experiment with it. Um, there's no harm in doing it. Anything you you can destroy, you're going to restart the game anyway. Um, and then save and quit to desktop is going to do a save game and game end. Okay. Um, I know game restart is just going to send us to is well, it's just going to restart the game. And you're like, well, that that's not saving and quitting anything, is it? But eventually, uh, I say eventually, next episode we're going to do a title screen. And that's where it's going to send us from that point onwards. All right. It'll look a bit weird at the moment because we'll just be restarting the game. Right. But um, uh, 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 eventually, like I said, it will be sending us to a menu. All right. Um, so that's pretty straightforward, really. I'm going to run the game now and load it up. And here we are in the game. We'll pop through to this room, open the menu. We've got game pause. If I press up and down here, we can now select the different options and just like continue, carry on. Um, we can select save and quit, which will just instantly restart the game. And we can do uh, save and quit to desktop, which will just, just quit the whole thing, right? And there we have it. That's episode 50. Um, huge thanks to everyone who's made it to this part. We'll talk more about this in the next episode. I don't want to take up too much of this with a whole like retrospective on the series. Um, but nonetheless, it feels like a significant milestone. So thank you all. Um, those of you who sat through 50 entire episodes of this, I hope you've got a lot out of it. I really, really do. Um, and uh, I'll see you on the next and possibly final um, until any kind of bonus content shows along. Um, shows along, shows up, comes along. A kind of a weird combination there. Either way, until, <laughs> until then, uh, next episode will probably be our final episode. Um, so I'll see you guys then. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time. If you found this video helpful or you enjoy the work that I do, you should know it's only possible and only exists thanks to the help of my Patreon supporters. If you become one of them today, you can get access to my source code, videos before they even release, and have a vote on the topics that I choose to cover. Doing so will help me make more, better quality videos for the future that are free for everybody to watch. So thank you to all my Patreon supporters, and of course, thank you for watching. I'll catch you all next time.